Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That is probably up there among the best known pieces of scripture in the entirety of the New Testament. And rightly so. It's from the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. Implied within that is 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 a profa- almost unfathomably, unfathomably profound promise. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those clean of heart. For they shall see God. Not, not they might see God, or they shall have a better chance of seeing God. For they shall see God. Implied in that, pure heart, see God. So clear. And I think, I think Christ was probably referencing a, an equally as well-known piece of scripture from the Hebrew Bible, which is the 29th chapter of Jeremiah. Then you will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. That, that is God promising his people through the prophet Jeremiah. God is saying through Jeremiah, then you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And so in Christ's style, as he often did with, 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 with the, the, the Hebrew Bible, he would take something and he would just escalate it a little bit. And he's taken that and he said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. That's a beautiful verse. But it's also a verse that causes, I think, quite a lot of dilemma for people. Because implied within it is what to do and the outcome. And it's so profound. And so I'll often get direct messages from people or or have conversations with people where they'll say to me, um... I'm really trying every day. I'm trying to purify my heart. Every day I'm, I'm trying to be a better person. Every day I'm trying to make myself worthy of God. And so often that I'm trying to purify my heart. The second half of the statement is I'm trying and failing. I'm, I'm not doing very well at it at all. And so the statement, the conversation is, is one of great solemnity and the, there is lament in it, there's despair in it, there's, there's elements of grief in it. And if that, if that, if that perspective in any way characterizes you, then the first thing I would say again is, is don't despair, don't fret, don't beat yourself up. Because, here's a controversial thing to say, I don't think you're supposed to purify your own heart. I don't think it's even possible. But before we move on to that, I'm going to flip that on its head slightly, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cha- make a challenging statement here. You know, I used to have people come to me years ago, and, you know, maybe they'd been through a series of, a, a process of great soul-searching, Maybe they'd had a crisis in their life and, and it was causing them to sort of go introspective and look and really, really find out something big had happened and they were looking. And often somebody throughout that process would come to me and they would say, in great grief, I, I, I've sought within and I am profoundly dishonest to the core. I'm never truly honest to anyone i'm never truly honest to myself i don't even know what honesty within would look like i'm i'm not honest to the core and when somebody would come to me with that i would at firstly i would let them really unpack that in themselves but i always had one answer well, one thing i'd respond with when the moment was right and that one thing was 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 you know, when somebody really pouring their heart out says, I am fundamentally not honest to the core. I don't even know what honesty is. I would say to them, 
Do you have any idea how much honesty within is required to even make such a statement? It, it, it is only profound honesty within that could ever make such a statement of itself. And so that, that very statement, I am not honest to the core, is the beginning of honesty. It has to be. And so in the same way, when somebody comes to me and says, you know, I, I've read that verse, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And you know what? I'm trying so hard to purify my heart. I'm trying every day. And you know what? I'm trying and failing. But, but that desire to purify your own heart, that desire to purify your own heart so you will see God, that ache and that desire, it can only come out of purity of heart. It, the desire for purity of heart is an expression of purity of heart. And so... Reduce the lament. See, see, see the real joy and the inspiration in the desire to purify your own heart. There is surrender in that. But then we're going to go back to this idea that I don't think you should. And, and, and the reason is that I think there's a real dilemma in... If somebody... Say, say somebody was able to purify their own heart... Say they were able to work really hard and, I don't know, meditate really hard or, or whatever it is they, 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 were, they thought they had to try to do. Um, and, they, and they worked really hard and then they got, their heart got purer and purer and purer. They'd be treading such a fine line, such a knife edge, where it would be so easy for them to topple into self-righteousness, into some sort of holier-than-thou attitude. It's like, if you could purify your own heart and therefore get closer and closer to seeing God, you'd be in such, you'd be in such mortal danger. And if I may, if I was... If I was one of the, the forces of evil, if you know what Paul called the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, if I was looking to target you, because you were getting dangerously close to purity of heart, what I would target is that proclivity we'd have to drop into self-righteousness. I'd kind of I'd encourage you down that route, because you you could become almost the worst, it, there's no purity of heart in self-righteousness. So the line to travel is so narrow. And, and that self-importance becomes something that so easily can be, be, come under attack. But the other thing that, that really strikes me, when you go into a meditation about, about purifying your own heart, is to me, it strikes me that it's, it's a bit like the, the old riddle. It's a bit like trying to open the box with the crowbar that's inside. It's like, you can't, we can't purify our own heart from within a corrupted heart. It, it's got nothing to stand on. How, what foundation would it, would it begin that process? Okay, so, so what does that mean? Well, what does it mean to have a pure heart? Well, firstly, let's look in, 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 in Hebrew scripture. That, that there is a precedent. There's a number of precedents. The first one I'd really like to look at is Solomon. The story of the young Solomon was, was he went to God and, you know, he said, he prayed, give your servant a discerning heart. So he could govern the people. Give your servant a discerning heart. That was his prayer. And the story goes that God was so impressed by the prayer. He granted him a discerning heart. But he also granted him abundance as well. Like kind of. Like on top of. 
So Solomon prayed to God for a discerning heart, and it was granted. And then we find in the Psalms, the psalmist saying and praying, in Psalm 51, to God, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. That's a prayer of the psalmist. Clean heart. In, in Hebrew culture, um, purity and clean, they were close enough to be synonymous. At, you, know, you, you, would, you, you would go through, uh, to, to, to have purity, you would go through a cleansing ceremony. And to be cleansed, you would go through a purifying ceremony. And so, creating me a clean heart, I, I think I'm not too out of limb to say that's created in me a pure heart. They're, they're pretty much the same thing. So, create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Jesus in the Beatitudes, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see, for they shall see God. So the psalmist is giving us a clue as to a prayer. And if we look then in, in the book of Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 36 of Ezekiel, you have God saying explicitly through the prophet Ezekiel to his people, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. It goes on to say, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. But the first part of that, God said through the prophet Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and so that's supported by the psalmist create in me a clean heart O God and it's supported by the by the story of Solomon we know this isn't a whimsical request and we also know that, that God himself promised that very thing now I get the sense from talking to people that that one of the things they might say is is I'm in the process of God purifying my heart. And I get that, that, that we, we, we have to have, especially I think with a Western mind, we have to have this idea that it is somehow a process. And yet, I'm really going to challenge that, because I think that if you take that the prayer of the psalmist and the promise of God and combine them, and that beautiful promise of Christ, and combine them, and then you also throw into the mix, it's the story of Saul. The people of Israel had been complaining to God that they wanted a king. All the other nations have a king, we want a king. And um, I think my understanding is in the beginning, God's like, you, you don't need a king. I'm, I'm like, look to me. And they're like, oh, but everyone else has got a king. We want a king. So God kind of acquiesces, grants their wish. And, and Saul is, is selected by, uh, by the prophet Samuel or through the prophet Samuel by God <clears throat> and there's this astonishing verse that really ties into what we're saying here and I'm just going to go straight in and it's it's Samuel chapter 10 verse 9 as Saul turned to leave Samuel God changed his heart as Saul turned to leave Samuel as he turned away God changed his heart there's no process in that there's no length of time it's it's clearly the writer is clearly telling us this is a moment in time as Saul turned to leave as he turned God changed his heart bang and 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 then and, and all these signs were fulfilled that day it goes on to to describe what that looked like and even the next verse I think the Spirit of God came powerfully upon him so you've got this verse that says God changing your heart God giving you a new heart God purifying your heart God cleansing your heart can happen like that in a moment and Christ said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God well there's your prayer right there all of that 
becomes a prayer. And, and you know, you might argue that the, the, from Ezekiel is eschatological and it's like in the past or it's for, for the end times. And it's like nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. Christ's own words, book of Matthew. Nothing is impossible for God. God can cleanse, change, purify your heart in a moment. No process required. And God said, I will give you a new heart. And the psalmist says, begs God, clean my heart. And so all of this becomes a prayer. You will seek me when you find me. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Well then, Father, you said, if I call on you and come and pray to you, you will listen to me. So listen to me now. And you said, anything I ask in your name, you will give me. Well, in your name, purify my heart. God, in your name, I ask that you purify my heart. No process required. In your name, give me a clean heart. And if you make that a prayer, and then as per Christ's words in the book of Luke, pray that prayer persistently to the point of annoyance, the parable of the persistent widow, pray that prayer over and over and over and over again. Father, you promised through Jeremiah, if I call on you and come and pray to you, you'll listen to me. And you promise through your son, whatever I ask in his name, in your name, you will grant me. And you said through the prophet Ezekiel that you'll give your people a new heart. So Father, like the psalmist asked, and like you did to Saul, Father, in your name, give me a new heart. Purify my heart. And I think you can even add, purify my heart that I may see you. Purify my heart that I am worthy to seek you. And, and, and that if I seek you, I will find you when I seek you with all of my heart. Clean my heart that all my heart wants to do is seek you with all my heart. It's a simple one line prayer. Father, purify my heart. And then you can let go of thinking that that's a process. And you can just let yourself begin to believe that, that God can purify your heart like that it's such a pure prayer it's such a a purity of heart prayer father purify my heart tell me you can't hear god listening to you when you say that <laughs>